Evidence of thoughtful design is all around us. Today, I want to challenge traditional thinking when it comes to the design of urban waterways and instead encourage an approach that begins with reconnection with nature. So a very TED type of thing to do is an exercise, right? So let's start with an exercise. There we go. Imagine with me that you are a child experiencing nature, any part of nature. Maybe you're digging in the dirt in the backyard or picking those little flowers that grow between the cracks in the sidewalk. Or maybe you're thinking about something more rugged and you're climbing a mountain to get to the top or camping under the stars. What kinds of feelings did these thoughts elicit in you? Maybe like me, you are super excited and get this sense of adventure that stirs within you. Maybe, like my children, who tend to band together when they get outside, you find connection with other people in this natural world around you. Or maybe, just maybe, you realize, like many of us often do, just how small we all are in this great big world and creation. <laughs> and thinking about all these things, making connections with nature, I got this feeling that something positive is stirring within me, not knowing what it is, this state of well-being. So, through conversation with a friend, wanting to make sure, surely, I'm not the only one that's thinking about this. I wanted to uh, do some research. So we did what any self-respecting person would do when we Googled it, right? <laughs> <laughs> what does nature do to our brains? You might be surprised to find the results I found. Uh, and maybe you're not. Articles from the New York Times and National Geographic popped right up. There are universities across the nation studying this very topic. And additionally, there are medical doctors providing their professional opinions on the subject, all pointing to the fact time in nature does something positive. So first of all, phew, I'm not crazy, right, for thinking about these things. And there are other people thinking about them too. That caused me to want to pull this feeling, this sense and awe of nature, into the work that I do every day. I am a meteorologist turned civil engineer, and I tend to focus on projects from a water resources perspective. You see, I've been studying rivers for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> As a native Houstonian, it didn't take me long to realize the bayous, that's what we call rivers in Houston, <laughs> the bayous are very important to our city. Without keeping them where they are, doing what they do, our city would flood, and that's not a good thing, right? Traditional engineering principles were put to the test in Houston back in the 1950s. Uh, in fact, Buffalo Bayou, you might note, if, if you're not from Houston, that Buffalo Bayou is upon the banks of the bayou is where Houston was founded back in the 1800s. So when I get to a little further along and tell you about the park, keep that in mind. It's an important river system here in Houston. But back in the 50s, traditional engineering methods looked a little bit like this. We started out with the goal of not flooding, uh, straightening our bayous, getting all those pesky bends in the bayou out, right? Uh, additionally, we cleared them of all the vegetation. Get rid of all that, that's slowing the water down. <laughs> Get it out. And finally, and this is actually still a tool in our toolbox, is the concrete lining of the channels. Uh, we, we still got to use that sometimes, but maybe we don't. Let's think about that. <sighs> Buffalo Bayou Park. Recently, I've had the privilege to work on the Buffalo Bayou Park project. Buffalo Bayou Park is a 160-acre park straddling a two-mile stretch of Buffalo Bayou directly west of downtown Houston. And you guys, it's amazing. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to go. There are miles and miles of hiking and biking trails that traverse the bayou. There are bridges that have scenic overlooks, restaurants as well, a dog park for our furry friends, and so much more. But it wasn't always that way. Since its initial clearing and straightening back in the 1950s, there had been no projects of notable significance. <laughs> that sounds good, right? We were talking about nature and reconnecting. But in reality, it's not good for our urban river, river systems. If you have urbanization in your city, rain falls on the ground, makes its way to the bayou, and the more urbanization that comes in, the more runoff you have. When it gets to the river or the bayou, the side slopes can't handle it, the edges of the bayou can't handle it, and they tend to fail or slough off. 
With each passing storm event, your bayou starts to widen and widen. Now, in a natural system, that's okay. We can encourage that, that's nice, it's natural. In an urban system, we lose our infrastructure, we build right up to the edge of that bayou with our buildings and our roadways and everything else. So, <laughs> I will say, luckily, along this stretch of Buffalo Bayou, plans to concrete line that channel were thwarted back in the 1960s uh, due to environmental and aesthetic concerns, oddly enough. Um, I can't help to think that those people would have been friends with me back then <laughs> as we think about these same things. So Buffalo Bayou Park. When we started, started the park, the bayou was overgrown. I mentioned no, no major project had been done since that time. It was overgrown, the banks were unstable, and we had lots of issues. I'm going to go through just a few of them with you. The first one, so the bayou is sandwiched between two major roadways, one into and out of the downtown Houston area. One of those roadways was being threatened, structurally, <laughs> the integrity of the roadway, by the bayou. It was, it was undermining the road. We knew we needed to do something about this with our design. We did not want the road falling into the bayou. Secondly, I mentioned those, getting those meanders out of the bayou. Well, they, they did this on a portion of the bayou, but just downstream uh, of this particular section, there are some major meanders that remained in place, and they were experiencing some serious erosion. In fact, if you were to stand up on the edge of one of those banks and look down, you'd look probably 20, 30 feet straight down to the water's edge. And for a park, that's probably not safe. <laughs> probably not safe for moms pushing strollers or people on bikes. So we knew we wanted to do something about that, too. And then, thirdly, we have this issue of sediment deposition. It's very common for a bayou or a river system to have sediment flow through the system, very normal. But what we're thinking about here is, what is that sediment going to do when it stops moving? <laughs> Where is it going to go? Uh, and we were thinking, because the sediment was tending to drop out, if you will, in inconvenient locations. And this is a park. We want to keep it clean and looking nice and feeling good for everybody there. So we wanted to prevent that sediment from dropping out in bad places. Also, you may know, knowing Houston's on the banks of Buffalo Bayou, the downstream end of our bayou is the Houston Ship Channel. An extra foot of Buffalo Bayou mud at the bottom of the Houston Ship Channel can cause hundreds of millions of dollars in economic damage. So that was something else we were tasked with thinking about through the course of our project. Buffalo Bayou Park. It has become an oasis in the heart of the concrete jungle. And I'm excited to share some of the solutions that we came up with today. That issue of the, of the roadway falling into the bayou, here's what we did. <laughs> we worked with, y'all are going to think this is great, we worked with our uh, soil engineers and our structural engineers and drilled 36-inch diameter concrete piers, one after another, right on the bank of that bayou. We really did, actually. But you wouldn't know it today because we covered it up. We, need that, we needed that strong foundation uh, to hold the road in place, to hold this infrastructure in place. But we came back in and provided vegetated geogrid lifts. The, in the picture here, you can kind of see remnants of it after vegetation has grown in between the path and the bayou on the left side of the photo. So you've got this sort of nice, natural slope. It's implanted with vegetation. It will only hold that slope even stronger with time. And we know it's covering up that buried infrastructure beneath. Perhaps kind of stirring some feelings of well-being, right? Y'all felt better when I said, Green, natural, not concrete, right? I know, it's true. Those big bends in the, in the, in the bayou, we actually um, softened them. We realigned the channel just a little bit to soften those bends to reduce the erosion and the shear stress that was happening on those edges. Uh, we put rock at the very bottom, at the toe, essentially, of the water line. You can see some right below those vegetated lifts. And we did that um, in several locations in the bayou is staying where we want it to stay. We've had a few flood events, we can prove it. <laughs> That's great. And then the third thing we did is we built what's called a bankful bench. You can see one on the right side of the bayou here. It's basically a grassy beach, and it encourages sediment to drop out there by the design, the design context alone. So when a rainfall event comes and floods, flood waters rise, our bayou's staying right where we want it, and the sediment is depositing itself in this nice open area, making, cleaning it out, excavation, um, and to keep the park in place, making it so much easier than if it were to travel downstream and need to be dredged out of the Houston Ship Channel. Now, I know Houston is not the only place, or the only settlement that was established upon the banks of a bayou. 
<laughs> and I know, <laughs> I know that the waterways, miles and miles of waterways that we have here, are replicated in other places as well. And maybe we can even use some of this thoughtful design there. So I want to encourage you, as you are out and about, experiencing design of any kind, look around you, perhaps with childlike wonder at the design. Maybe it's 100% natural, or maybe it's completely engineered. Or maybe, like our Buffalo Bayou Park, it's a thoughtful blending of both. And remember, while you're doing this, remember, time in nature does something to our brains. It's proven to be restorative, it reduces stress and anger and fear. It's also connective and creates unity. Thank you.